Hey everybody, how's it going? John here. What if I could scroll slot? What if I what if I could an earthquake? What if I could scroll saw design portrait and woodworks? How's it going, everybody? What are y'all up to today? Oh my god, what's going on? Uh, oh, that's because wow. the queen walked in. The queen walked in the room. I can't control. I can't control myself. Oh my god, what's going on? China's here. Uh, hi, China. Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Uh, oh my god. Uh, Herb's in the chat. Jess is in the chat. Joe's out there. Uh, Amanda's out there. China's out there. Um, Joe, are you talking about the crochet show? That's gonna be out Wednesday nights. Like I'll even give you a sneak peek at my uh oh see sneak peek. Hold on a second. Look at this. Look, see, 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 I'm starting starting my hooks, whoops and chains, freaking logo. Here you go. Hey, Art, how's it going? Hey, hello everybody. What do you have to I'm all right. Not much today. Got a little bit ready. Hello, Herb, Jessica, China, Joe, Amanda. Jack. And, uh, Larry. And, yeah, and Larry and JJ. What's Amanda saying? You get tired of me. Out of cucumber. Um yeah, okay, Joe. Hooks, wipes, canes, crops, and cuts. <laughs> wipes. <laughs> Not that kind of show. Hey, JJ. Hey, Larry. What are you guys up to? What are you guys up to? I don't know how... I See, I hurt my hand today, so I don't know how I'm going to be crocheting tomorrow. We'll figure it out, though. There's so much pain I'm in tomorrow. I got my hand crushed in a freaking one of the tool bin doors today. Oh, no, Amanda. You got a lot more to offer than just your jovial humor. Whip, whip, <laughs> whip. Ah, stop working on your own hand. Somebody's got to work on it. Hey, Mr. Billy Burt, how's it going? Hey, hey, hey. Hello, Billy. How's, hey, Art, how's it going, everybody? What's going on, John? What do you have to do today? Just sitting in your comfy chair. Uh, yeah, for now. I've, I've been, I was out in the shop earlier. Hey, what? Buddy. You're in your shop? Well, why, why aren't you filming from your shop then? I had to come in and eat and clean up and I can walk down there if you, if you really want me to. Clean up. For a few minutes and show people around on my phone, but I don't know. Hey, Jim. Oh, we can wait till tomorrow people show up. We've only got 14 people Jess, watching right now. Joe. Oh, Joe, are, 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 are you going to well, join the, me on my... The, Joe, are you going to join me on my first show and then have a... Set, set the theme for the entire, the entire production of videos for my crochet? My, my enticing crochet journey. Because <laughs> I know uh, uh, Lydia wanted to see your shop and Beth wanted to see your shop. And... Hey, Steve. Hello, Steve. Steve. Thank you, yeah, Steve. I'll go down there. Hello, Steve. No, we can wait till we can oh. leave more show up. I'm going to get tired. Yeah, I'll, after a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll go down, log in with my phone, and do a quick show and tell. Hey, Chris. Hello, Chris K. So Chris this was K. A Jed Ivy raid. What? A Jed Ivy raid? <laughs> well, Joe, if you're going to bring it up, you might as well go all out, right? 
Well, Chris is here from Gen Ivy. Where's everybody else? Yeah, my hands are really sore. Like, freaking, I got three knuckles all bent up on it. Like, the the tool door crushed on one, crushed on my 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 first finger. And stint blood bluster just burst right away. And I can, I, I know I yeah. got one on the back side. I got one on the back side too. You feel it all the way through. It's gonna be hard to hold my hold my yarn <laughs> for tensioning. I, it's gonna be hard to tension my yarn properly. Excuses, that's, excuses. That's how you get blood, sweat, and tears in all your work, though. <laughs> Made with love, <clears throat> damn it. Made with love, I tell you. Or or let a piece get away from you on the bandsaw. That's how you get blood, sweat, and tears on some of your stuff, too. <laughs> yep, that too. Oh, oh. <clears throat> I had so much freaking driving today too. I was doing I drove what freaking five and a five and a half hours of driving. Two jobs. I, I had, like I said I had to drive an hour, hour south, did a job there about forty five minutes. I drove an hour back and then two and a half hours north. There for four hours. And drove two and a half hours back. Joe said she don't hold our yarn that way. It feels odd. I don't know how to hold my yarn yet. I'm, I'm, Chris I'm, thinking, said I'm, I'm thinking I'm just gonna like like do like twelve wraps around my hand, and just freaking hold like this <laughs> <laughs> to get them as tight as possible. I don't care. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Chris said they were deciding where to go, and I said come over, but they may go elsewhere. Oh, yes, Neil. Yes. Hey, Neil. How's it going? Neil. Neil. Yeah, like I tried. So, so, so the other day, I, I uh, you know, because you know, you need this finger for tensioning, right? It doesn't make sense to me. So I was, I was, I was trying to tension with this finger, but it just kept getting loose as as I was doing my chains. And then, so I, I tried back wrapping it around this one, around this one, then twice around my pinky, and I'm trying to keep tension on it, and it's just not working. I'm like, think, think about sewing machine. How you got to keep that? You put the thread in the. And the tension, then you make sure the bobbin is tensioned right, right, so it doesn't pull much too much too fast. Or think about fishing and using a a casting reel, not a spin yeah. cast. But a, no, you don't know. So you have to keep tension with your thumb, so it doesn't I, birds nest on you. You talking fly fishing? No. Oh. <laughs> Well, bass well, fishing. <laughs> hey, Angela, how's it going? Why are you on Facebook, Angela? Joe said, see, too weird. I'll figure it out. Uh, Nancy sent me a video, so I'll, I'll, have to wa I'll have to watch her video and see how she... Oh, and, uh, Angela, what are you doing over there? Uh, she said she got the internet. It's just tonight. And stream already won't let me use that oh. um, phone. I'll be watching on Facebook if I can. Well, then I'm not working your project. End of story. Done. Chris, well, I'm Chris Chris Nancy holds with a fist. Maritza. Well, she sent me a video. I, I, I still have to watch it. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, oh, Rob. Hello, Robin. Because she was explaining explaining changes and stuff. Hey, Robin. How's it going? You doing okay? How All you right. feeling, girl? Better type faster. Come on. Hurry up, Robin. Type it. Type it. <laughs> I'll still work on it, Angel. Angel. I'll still work on it, Angel. Oh, yeah, Joe. Send me pictures of how you hold yours. I'll, I'll show you a picture of how I hold mine, too. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, I'll show you mine if you show me yours kind of thing. That's the way it works, right? Start starts off in uh, kindergarten, doesn't it? 
you're barely doing good. You're barely holding on. You're barely surviving. You're barely able to lift your self off she your said ass. I, she said, I can't see the TV, barely. <clears throat> Joe said, oh, please do. Hello, Elizabeth. Hey, Liz. Joe, go to your, okay. Joe, go to your room. Liz, how are you? So move the chair closer, Robin. You're a bit sore. Well, I'm sure that's to be expected, isn't it? Liz said she'll be back after Connie's life. Which Connie? I think she meant Nancy. I think she meant Nancy. I think Nancy's live. Uh, Nancy is live. Connie has a premiere. Oh, that's right. Connie Dunyon. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm so bad. I'm sure. Man, so bad. <clears throat> Jill's going to be RB because she's looking at my pictures. I just sent her. <laughs> 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 you got you ready to go tonight, Art? Almost. <clears throat> I gotta split it up. I got uh, I got four of these ready. Cool. So I gotta cut them all up. Look, I got the truck back. Hey, Andy Mike, how are you? I love all my fans. Yeah. How's it going, Mike? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I got the elephant in the big room back on the other way. That was fun. I'll try to have them done by Saturday. We'll see. I don't know. Billy Angel wants to know what you're munching on. <laughs> okay, it's called a Chicago, Chicago blend. blend. What is it? Popcorn? Yeah. Um yeah, it's kind of car kind of caramely. It kind of like cracker jacks, except not quite as tasty. You're supposed to eat those at the ball game. I think there may be some cheddar mixed in with it too, which is why it's called Chicago Blend. It'd be really good if it had some beer nuts mixed in there with it. You had any Cracker Jacks lately? I had a small box here a while back. I think there was one peanut in the box. I know the boxes have gotten a lot smaller than when I was a kid. Because I remember when I was a kid, they were probably... Oh, yeah. Like, well, it's it, the same with cereal, right? Yeah. They don't make the big tall box anymore? Mm. No, the, the boxes now, the one I had was about six inches tall, maybe three quarters of an inch thick, and wow, three inches wide. Really small. Man. Yeah. And then they want to honor the for it too, probably. Did, did they still did they still make that pink popcorn with the elephant on the elephant in the front with the blue the blue package? Was like pink popcorn? I don't know that I've ever seen it. I've never, maybe, I've never seen it here. Maybe it's an American maybe it's a Canadian thing. Might be. <laughs> Andy Mike said, Who's the new guy on the bottom? You know, Mike, it's just been a while. Special guest. That. 
pink candy popcorn. No, I have never seen that. I haven't either in, in my lifetime. That well, must be a Canadian thing. It, yeah, probably tastes like cotton candy. Man, I don't oh, like oh, cotton candy. Oh, Andy, Mike. Oh, yeah, see, it's Canadian. So, Lucky Elephant Pink Candy Popcorn. I just did, Chris. Canadian confection has been in the snack food market since the 1950s. It's been around since the 50s. You've never heard of it. You've never seen it. Nope. You've never uh -huh. had it. Nope. Not down here. At least not, not mm -hmm. right there. It's got to be a Kanukistani thing. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Free and fast, Canada wide shipping. Look at that. Well, with orders over 500 bucks. <sighs> I'm looking at my one box for $18 shipping. What a deal. Three bucks per <laughs> box, $18 okay. for shipping. $18 shipping. Holy crap. I, I don't think there's any popcorn in the world worth that. No. Well, I guess I got to buy $500 worth to get free shipping then. <laughs> We'll be eating popcorn for a while. Yeah. I'm sure Robin's not eating some right now. Like, ah, uh, pink popcorn. That goes along with thrilled gum, right? Pink popcorn and thrilled gum. Mm hmm. I liked clove gum. That was good. Clove gum. Yeah, yeah. You can still find it every now and then. But yeah, I like clove gum, but I like cloves. <clears throat> and he I've says, Herb, never... Herb, you look good behind that saw, dude. Yes, he did. He did why indeed, do people, Mike. <laughs> why do people chew why do people chew clove gum? Chew what? Why do people chew on clove gum? Uh, clove gum can regularly okay, potentially help improve oral hygiene, reduce gum inflammation and tooth pain, combat bad breath, and fight harmful bacteria. I liked it. I thought it had good flavor. See, I know I know clove oil is good for toothaches. Yeah. Chris K said it tastes good. Yeah, you you got to be kind of up in age to know what clove gum is. I think. Unless tea you... berry, blackjack, Beeman's, and clove gum. Beeman's wasn't bad. They're all made by the same company. They still make that. Is that yeah. It was it was that clove flavor. Is that who made the clove gum, John? Beeman's? Uh, Beachman. Beachman made it. Oh. See, Billy, you just you distract me with food. Oh, I'm start sorry. with your popcorn. That's why. Oh, well, I'm done. Hmm. Uh, now yeah, I'm smoking. Yeah, you you're done really good. Oh, Neil, you 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 collect comic books. You don't collect old gum. <laughs> I, was watching, <laughs> I was watching this guy that bought cases and cases of of trading cards, like baseball trading cards, and you know you come with a stick of gum, and he had this huge mound of these broken old gum from the '80s, right? And he started chewing on them. <laughs> like, they're like razor sharp, biting into them. <clears throat> There was another one back then that I really liked, and I don't remember what it was. Gold Nugget. Yeah, Chris, I'm not saying you're old. I'm saying I'm old. Mm. You could be significantly younger and... <clears throat> 
somebody my age introduced you to it. I never liked chewing gum as a kid, though. I I like chiclets and uh, uh, hubba bubba, juicy fruit. I, I was you know, double mint. I was never a big gum fan. Well, me either. I liked juicy fruit, but um, I really, when I was a kid, I really liked spearmint. I don't much care for it anymore. <laughs> never liked wintergreen. <laughs> Dags is twenty four. Double mint, liar. Double mint was eh. I like to watch it okay. I, I, now. Now, double mint. I liked watching the commercials. That was about it with the double mint twins. Hey, Trace. How's Tracy. Hello, oh, Tracy. Yeah, I didn't like Big League Chew either. I did like Bazooka Bubblegum, though. Big League Chew. Ow. Ow. What do you got on the go now? What are you working on? Who, me? Yeah, you. A um, couple of things. Laser, blade, scroll stuff. All three? You're doing a, you're doing a, a, a combo? A, a combo collab with all three? <laughs> well, no, I have. I've done, I have combined scroll saw with turning. And I have combined laser and turn and turning, and I have combined laser and scroll saw. Okay, so now you need to combine scroll sawing, laser, and turning, and you're going to make a platter to put your food on in the kitchen. Then you I'm you put the, my food on in the chick in the kitchen. Well, 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 well. Okay, so, so you're 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 taking your craft, your art, your art, right? You're you're taking your craft and 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 mix, mixing it with your cooking and doing a combination of everything that you do. Oh well, I am fixing to turn a new handle for one of my walk utensils because <laughs> <clears throat> it's been put in the dishwasher too many times. Even though we tell the kids and the uh, grandkids. Wood handles don't go in the dishwasher. Don't put any wood in the dishwasher. Mm -hmm. No. But it's split in half now, so I've got to go turn a new handle for it. All right. I'm going to... Oh, I had you for a second. There you are. Yeah, I'm there. 
Okay. Um, I muted my other camera. Turn this up so I can hear. Just a little quick uh, light. <clears throat> All right, how do I don't want to reverse this thing? To be on the bottom, bottom right. Yeah. Okay, quick 50 cent tour. <clears throat> this rolling island with the barn doors. I made this a few years ago. I remember that. I figured you might. <laughs> My wife loves it. <clears throat> and I made she wanted a coffee cup nook with a light under it over the coffee bar so I made that a few weeks ago that's nice what uh, would you make it out of Becky Cypress oh nice uh, all the and these are these are interlaced, you know, cut halfway through and stacked like egg crate. Yep. So these are interlaced. The the trim on the bottom came off of a player piano that was made in Chicago in 1936. Same with the trim at the top. This is actually big leaf maple. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Like I said, 50 cent tour. Wrong light switch, goofball. Look at my halfway made bed. Oh, your video cut out. Yeah. Okay, maybe it will. Ooh, that spalted beach on the front. And the rest of it was made up from old doors and door jams that a guy was throwing out. The house that he took them out of was built in 1962, and I reclaimed the wood. The tops and the bottoms are the doors. And I made the trim, the feet and the trim out of the door jams and or I mean out of the moldings. And the sides are glued up from panels from the door jams. And I made the feet match the feet on this dresser that we had. So if you look at those feet, and I even use the same kind of pulls. So if you look at those feet and you look at those feet, they're the same. Nice. Uh, this was made out of cheap, thin wood uh, from Asia. It's a ladder pair, and it was about three inches more narrow. And the back comes up and it flips over and converts into a ladder. And so I took some. That oak flooring you were showing people last night? Yep. I took pieces of oak flooring. A guy gave me two full boxes of it. And I rebuilt it. Made it three inches wider. And made it out of a better material. But used a piano hinge for the seat. And now it works perfect. Cool. Nice. No more rickety. This is an old house. I heard picker. Later, Herbie. How many rooms you got? Uh, four bit five bedrooms. Well, you had like twelve kids, right? Well, no, we had five kids, but we've only been in this house for six years. Oh, really? 
Yeah, there's a lot of bedrooms. Art everywhere. I like art. Um, Crystal. The avid art collectors don't know who this guy is. Goddard. Michael Goddard. The rock star of the art world. Oh, wait. I'm getting my. One of the reasons I went back here in the first place was to get my shop keys. They're in my other shorts. Anyway, this house was built. This is actually two houses that were put together. This one was built in 1954. This one, the only new construction is this foyer. It ties the two pieces, the two houses together. Wow. The fireplace. These built-ins were here. Some of the stuff I do. Wow. Nice. So the built-ins were here. I want to put some built-ins down the basement, like on the other side of the fireplace. And the fireplace was here. Right here, because you can see where the hearth was. Yeah. So the fireplace was here. This house was built in 1915. Wow. And on one of the universities, one of the Catholic universities here in town, Our Lady of the Lake. And uh, in 36, 35 or 36, it was moved to Terrell Hills, one of the rich parts of town. Wait, is that a birthday cake? I think, yeah, my granddaughter's 60th birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, and so it was moved in 1935. In 1954, the house, the part we were just in, was built next door to it. And in 1985, the guy was going to, a guy bought both houses, was going to tear them down, build a big house. And so the guy that owned this acre bought them both for a song and moved them in here. And this is. And this is one of them going across 1604, one of the highways here. So we got them trucked in. That's out of the newspaper. <laughs> so this is this, the formal dining room. And uh, Jess is here, isn't she? Yeah. Jess, see the frogs? Frogs, frogs everywhere. Frogs, frogs everywhere. Uh, now I am that. <clears throat> These aren't frogs over here. These are some of my Harleys. I'm a motorcycle guy. See? Uh, Larry C. last night said he wanted to see my leather work. Uh, this is, I think this is the piece he's talking about. <clears throat> oh, yeah, right, that one. That leather, leather piece, right? Yeah, I carved that and tooled it. Oh, mercy. 30 years ago. And uh, I've still got all my tools, and I, I still know how. And then I, I gave it to my mother, and she stuck it in a closet. And when Dad died and she moved in with my brother, I asked her if she knew where it was, and she said, yeah. And I said, well, I'd like it back because I want to frame it. And so I built this. I dyed this backer black and made this frame out of African mahogany and framed it. Uh, okay, these are some of my turnings that I don't have room for in there. This one is 
This one is my marriage between scroll saw and wood turning. This is a scroll saw pattern. And I scrolled the pieces out. I used uh, quarter inch Baltic birch. And then I glued them together and I put them in a mold. And I put a mold on the inside and I filled it with orange resin and then put it on the lathe and turned it. Nice. I think I think it's pretty cool. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, this is one of my scroll saw pieces. I keep hoping to try to sell. Well, I I, I thought you you made a bunch of those. I think you made made those for a charity or something. I did. Uh, for 100% of the proceeds for these, I only made two to start with. Okay. And uh, and I haven't sold either one of them yet. I call them Wings of Hope. And 100% of the proceeds will go to St. Jude's. I won't how keep much, a dime. How much are you trying to sell them for? 150 Okay. In case anybody wants to know, call and Jack they, Billy. But and Wings they, of Hope. And they come with a little stand, and I pay the shipping and everything. So, this is a uh, that's vaulted pecan, I think. A little vase. Oh, this is the one you were talking about that you like. Yeah, that one. Because, like I said, it looks like a friggin' like a it, 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 like a uh, like I'm a frac it's, it's, yeah, a looks fractal like art. Fractal, but, yeah, um, it looks like fractal burning. Lichtenberg. Lichtenberg yeah, yeah. yeah. I was looking for the word Lichtenberg. Yeah, and I, it's just two pieces of oak that I glued together, and they didn't coat match. They the colors didn't match, so I dyed the bottom purple. So I do silly stuff like that sometimes. Hey Connie. Hey Carmen. How's it going? <clears throat> I don't remember. Oh, yeah, this is another bedroom. So you got two bedrooms over here, uh, three on the other side. One of them my wife uses as an office and a sewing room. Um, one bath on this side, two on the other side. This used to be the kitchen for this house, and it's just a huge laundry room. Well, I guess water already flumbed in, right? And really, uh... yeah. So this is just laundry room, but I love it. And second, pantry storage. But all these old doors, these are all original. Nice, solid oak. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep. Oh, and more art everywhere. My aunt painted those. And gave them to me, or my grand, my great aunt, my grandmother's sister. Nice. Gave them to me years ago. My mother did that one. <clears throat> All right, I don't know why that likes me. Okay, down to the chop. Oh, uh -huh. my wife two years ago redid this dresser. It's solid oak, but it was in pretty bad shape, and we couldn't get all of the paint. There are like two different, three different colors of paint on it: white, uh, kind of a turquoisey color, and a green. Um, that, for lack of a better color, I'm gonna call it avocado green, but it wasn't that pretty. And so we, she spent a week stripping it and sanding it the best she could, and she wanted it to be blue because of the blue curtains in here and the bedspreads and the artwork is all blue and then we repainted the entire room because if the walls were yellow so we painted the room a light gray that wall is a darker gray because it's a well it's a brownish gray but it's darker because we wanted an accent wall and the trim was already up and so I said, well, let's paint the trim the same color as the wall. She said, I don't know if I like that. But once we got it painted, she liked it. And I hung those lights to shine on the art. Um, my mother painted that one, too. 
She hated it. She was going to throw it away. She didn't even sign it for about 20 years. Finally, I made her sign it. Um, anyway, oh, back to the dresser. And she said, I want it kind of decorative. So I found a pattern or a drawing of something that I like. And I scrolled these out. I did not. These are... It's not a real good quality wood, but it didn't really have to be because they're painted. Um, I didn't stack cut them. They're all cut individually. But I scrolled those and painted them and glued them on. And I used the same paint that's on the wall. Cool. And she redid and recovered the, the bench. That bench went with a vanity that went with that set. And it fell apart, but she wanted to keep the bench. Oh, how long has it been since uh, I one of them? Well, uh, you walked by. I was, I was going to ask you about your phone, Nook. You saw your land, your landline still work? No. Uh, oh. this, this, I don't even know if this phone works. I've never tried to plug it in. We don't have a landline. Oh. But uh, after we moved in here, that phone nook was there, and my wife was in an antique store a few years ago, and she found that old phone, and she said, I have to have that for our phone nook. So, antique phone for the phone nook. Cool. And the dial still works. <laughs> hey, Connie. <laughs> Hello, Connie. Hey, Connie. I don't know if you've seen this one. Uh, this is, yeah, I, I, I knew I called it. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's off center. I, I was trying to figure out why. Yeah, I turned it and I lasered it, and then I put it back on the lathe and I turned the bowl out, but I turned it off center. And then, if that wasn't enough, I sanded it at a slant so that it sits facing towards you. It's taller in the back. Pretty heavy bowl. It is pretty heavy, and it's uh, Arizona ash. Uh, I filled these knots with mother of pearl. Uh, my granddaughter painted that one. What a talent your family there. Thank you. Um, my some of my treehouse ornaments. Oh, uh, frogs. frogs. Frogs, 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 frogs. It's as bad as me showing off my turtle collection. Frogs. Uh, I will show. <clears throat> this was the part of the piece that John was talking about last night. Uh, I did this frog. It's in Tarsha from my wife for her birthday last year. Uh, the, colors, the colors aren't really showing through good. There you go. The, sure. the only non-natural color on this piece is the black. I was going to say the black. Yeah, I dyed. The, the hat band is black and the black part of the eyes. Everything else is natural. All of this wood, except for the bow tie. The bow tie is African mahogany and the bloodwood, that's the red part of the eyes. That's natural color. The uh, and that's I didn't I didn't stain or dye the whites of those eyes. That's a light colored piece of plywood that I found. But every bit of this wood except for the bow tie and the bloodwood for the eyes came out of that player piano from 1936. Wow. Uh, the greens, all of those greens are natural. That that player piano was made out of pine, oak, uh, mahogany veneered oak, big leaf maple, and green poplar. You know, you you could have used the uh, the black ivory from the keys for the black. It was a, I, I tried, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> <clears throat> Black keys are traditionally ebony. Yep. <clears throat> they weren't. They were painted walnut. Oh, okay. 
anyone doesn't know. Okay, down to the shop. Holy frick, it's so dark there, man. Yeah. But you're only an hour ahead of me. Freaking, it's still bright out here. Oh, it ain't bright here. Thankfully, the carport that's attached to the shop, this is actually an RV carport. I don't have an RV, don't want one. But it's lighted, so I can work out here at night and not, not get lost. Look, it's Billy's it's, Messy it's, Studio. Do what? Welcome to Billy's Messy Studio. Oh, indeed. Indeed. Let me turn the... Got my air cleaner to turn off. Cleaner in my shop. Yeah, see? The Messy Studio. That's the new logo. I say new. Several years old. Now, this is that piece I got to turn a handle for. This is my original logo. I designed it, and it looks like crap. But it got the job done for the time being. That is one of my woodworking heroes. That's Norm. Yeah, that's an autograph picture. I met him in 1996 at a builder's convention in Houston. I have wood everywhere. Everywhere. Look at all those burls. One of these days, I'll get brave enough to turn one. Wood everywhere. <laughs> oh. There's my scroll saw. My 30-inch Pegas. Man. I really like I really like this saw. And right now, it's covered with crap because I do more turning than I do anything else. But... This is going to be one of my scrolled projects. You can see where I lasered the, maybe you can see, I lasered the pattern very lightly onto the wood, and I'm going to, it's a little rocking horse. Now I'm, I need to finish it. But I've got to get ready for SWAT too, so that takes a little bit of time. Ooh, look at that. This is what I've been working on lately. Nice. This will be a vase. This piece of walnut was a hot part, top part of a hollow form, but it was ugly and clunky and heavy and too thick. So I cut it off and I made a pretty bowl out of it. This walnut came down during Katrina on a house in New Orleans. And my brother went and cut it off the house and asked me if I wanted some. And I said, well, is a pig's butt pork. So I made this feature ring out of walnut, oak, and rubber tree wood. This ring is made out of ash juniper. Around here, they call it mountain cedar. Yeah, that's going to look so nice when you get it. This ring is big leaf maple, walnut, and African mahogany. Staggered. Look, four pieces of each. Cut? How tall is it huh? going to be when you're done? How it? what? How tall is it going to be when you're finished it? Uh, it's a vase, right? So. About seven inches. Okay. It's not going to be very big. And about seven inches. It's uh, ten inches wide. That's going to look so nice when you get a finish on that. Thank you. All those colors pop right up. Yeah, I'm going to call it the vessel of many colors. <laughs> Just because it seems like the thing to call it. Uh, I have. Let me down for a second. Move my fancy wood clamp out of the way. Uh, I made this. I put this ring together tonight. It's a small ring. This is beach. I can take it out of the clamp now. This is beach. It's not very thick. This ring 
is going to go between my feature ring and this one because I need to separate that. Like I've got this separated here with a yep. one kind of wood. I'm going to separate this with one kind of wood. And the bottom ring or the bottom of the, to set this off, the very bottom ring is going to be walnut. Nice. Don't fall. I said, don't fall. Okay, both of you fall. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to have a, this beach will go in between and I'll have another beach ring in between the walnut bottom and uh, the multi stuff. So when's, when, when's SWAT come out? That's in? The end of August. Oh, end of August. Uh, I was thinking end of June or okay. no, the end of August. Last weekend in August. But I also have to get stuff ready for. Uh, I'm doing a demo up in Austin for the Austin Woodworkers Club in May next month. So I've got to get ready for that. I'm not ready. What do you What do you plan on for that? Uh, I'm going to do a three sided goblet. Off center. I, I I like off center turning. It's fun and it makes people wonder. <laughs> this Joseph. is one of my off center jigs. Joseph, I wouldn't yeah. even half of what you're talking about in here. <laughs> well, basically, let me show you. If Joe, you put this, okay. <laughs> okay, on center turning is like this. It's to make it symmetrical. It's it's symmetrically round. Well, if I put a piece in here, I turn a tenon on the bottom of a piece, and I put it in here, and I center this in this jig, I mean, in this chuck, and I turn it, it'll be, it'll be uh, concentric. It'll uh -huh. be round. No, it'll be concentric. It'll be round. If I shift this this way, now it's over here. So this, I've moved the center. So it's not, I won't get a concentric turning anymore. So that's how I did that bowl that I showed you with the roses engraved on it. So did you make that, Jay? Because I, yes. I, I see people just adjusting them all the time. Yes, I made this, Jay. And uh -huh. this is going to be another one. And that's what, <clears throat> this one's going to be a little bigger. It's going to have a three inch hole in the middle so I can do bigger pieces. And these I will use for the same reason I use these. Right. That lets this, when I take it out, I can put a piece in it and it slides and I can clamp it. Nice, nice. So this is the jig that I will be using when I get it made for my demo in May. Remind me when we get back inside, I'll show you a three-sided goblet. Except the one I'm going to demo in May is about going to be three times the size. Cool. I just finished this bowl the other day. Yep, this, that's what it, I was talking about last night. This is ash juniper. And it's got turquoise in it. These were chainsaw cuts. And I didn't like them. So I filled them with turquoise and black super glue. And this void don't bother me. That's nature. I like nature. I like that though. It, and it, so it, 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 it adds a certain air of je ne sais quoi to it, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think it gives it a lot of character. Uh, these are the off cuts from that feature ring over there, the one with the chevrons in it. I'm going to do something with those. I haven't figured out what yet. Joe's asking how much you sell your bowls for. This is one of my marriages between woodworking and laser. This is a true calabash bowl. Round on the bottom. No flats on it anywhere. All of this is trying to do this with the two hands. All of this up here, there's nothing flat there. It's all, it's, it's a gradual curve. And that's a true calabash bowl. Nature, I mean, patterned after 
calabash gourds. It comes from Hawaii, the calabash dust. And uh, when they started making them out of wood, they were carving them with, they weren't turning them, they didn't have lathes. But they were taking pieces of wood and carving them out with basalt stone mm -hmm. and sanding them with pumice. Wow. To get them smooth. And the wood would crack as they worked, and they don't care. They like cracks. And what they would do is they would take these things called pavas. It's spelled P-E-W-A-S. They would take these things called pavas, and they would, they don't go all the way through. They would carve, they would inlay them basically across the crack to stabilize it and keep it from splitting apart. So, and then they use these for food. But these wooden ones, because it took them so long to make, they were only given to Hawaiian royalty. Did you laser out your butterflies on those? I did. I lasered out the butterflies. I, I actually, I, I burnt. <coughs> I used film mode and I, I ran it powerful or strong enough and slow enough that with two passes, I got about an eighth of an inch deep cut, which was perfect, which is what I wanted. And then I used the same pattern and a piece of eighth inch walnut. And I cut the butterflies out or the inlays and then I glued them in and then sanded them all nice and smooth. And I'm working on getting the finish on it. Uh, this one was done and I brought it back out here. This is ash juniper, mountain cedar, uh, juniperus ashii actually um same that same thing as uh eastern red cedar it's ash juniper so i brought it back out here to to buff it and i knocked it off of the bench today and cracked it in three places so i'm going to have to put it back on the lathe and refinish it now that it's glued back up Joe was asking how much your bowls go for, like the, your your turquoise bowl there, for example. Like which one? Your turquoise bowl. Oh, that one. Uh, I don't know. I hadn't figured it yet. Let me. I didn't bring my phone. I know I brought my phone. I didn't bring my. What am I talking about? My phone. Oh, wait. I didn't bring my phone. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, you just got off. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be back on in a second. Hit the wrong button with this, with this, with this reacher tool. <clears throat> oh, there he is. Okay, you're let's back. Try this. Let's try this again. Um, this one is seven and a half by three. Yeah. And 65 plus shipping for that one. There you go, Joe. 65 plus shipping. I've got tons of jigs out here that I've made to help me do stuff. Uh, this one I made to help hold my dust collector head up. Hello, Beth. Hey, Beth. Took a tripod apart, Hi, hung it upside Beth. down. That's what I put my one of my cameras on. I made that to hold another camera. I made this setup over here to hold a camera in two different places and for my other dust collector entry for this lathe i've got this lathe that i have set up with only uh buffing wheels right now my, my, big, up, Billy. my big band i have three lathes okay my big band saw oh back there wood wood and more wood uh all kinds of wood this shelf, you can see all this tongue and groove stuff. 
that is Pecky Cypress. That came out of a house that was being remodeled. He was throwing it away. Uh, I went and picked up about 500 board feet of it. If some of it is 10 inches wide, some of it's three or two. I have air dried walnut up there. I have air dried cherry down here. Those have been cut and dried for 10, 15 years. That piece over there came out, it's hand hewn. It was part of a beam out of a barn that was built over a hundred years ago in Northern Kentucky. That is wormy American chestnut. I have turned one piece out of that so far and I, I need to get back to it. Uh, most of this back here, as I knock stuff in the floor, most of this wood back here, all of this over here, came from that player piano that built in Chicago in 36. And those are all the, these are the keys and the boards there on. This is a pretty soft wood, but it, it machines nice. This stuff with stain and stuff on it, these were parts of a baby bed, two baby beds that I took apart and I've been using. So, yeah, my two lasers of 40, 22 watt here, 10 watt here. This collects the smoke out of both of them and takes it outside. So I get no smoke in the shop whatsoever. It looks funky, but it works. I don't mind function over form. The same with those that wood rack that I built using T-bar and wood. Function over form. Ain't the prettiest in the world, but it works. Yep. I built this workbench several years ago. Uh, I really like it. I use dovetail joinery and it's nice and sturdy. I built that air cleaner and it does move a lot of air. That's built out of an old HVAC squirrel cage that I have two MERV 11 filters in to pull all of the dust out of the air. And it gets 90% of it. If I get this thing a little dusty, I can turn that on. I, I leave it on pretty much all the time right now because it's asthma season. But when I, if it starts to get a little dusty, I can turn that on. It'll clean this shop in 10 minutes. Cool. Uh, grill press, you know, everybody's got one of those. My miter saws over there, it seldom gets used. Air compressor. My filming computer. My planer, it needs... I need to change, flip, the, flip the blades around. They're in horrible shape. My 25-inch drum sander, I use it all the time. You don't have uh, helical on your planer? No. No, that's a cheap 12-and-a-half-inch uh, delta. Um, I may... Next planer I buy, I may break down and buy a good one. No, like the the, the, the helical planer is so nice because like you, you can use each blade four times. Just just turn them with an Allen key and just rotate them, eh? Yeah, I didn't show you this. A friend of mine just gave me this brand new, never used, never even it was never even out of the box, put together router, router table that I have my big Milwaukee router in, and he also gave me this old. Now, see, this is some of the wood that I've milled up to make earrings out of. This walnut and African mahogany and oak. He gave me this six-inch Craftsman planer. It's in really good shape, it, but it needs to be refurbished. I need to get the rust off of the, the bed and tune it up. But I don't use a joiner very often. 
I've never needed one. I get this is peak. That's some of that walnut. That's some of that walnut. I get uh, I get jointer quality cuts off of my table saw every time. But if you have a good blade and your and your saw is tuned up, that's what you get. This has not seen sandpaper or a jointer. It's only been through my table saw. Yeah, I need to get some new blades. You just got to use good blades. Yeah. Uh, this is more of that piano. That's a piece of poplar out of the piano. That oh. is a piece of big leaf maple out of the piano. Oh, this. Do what? Mr. Russ Meadows is in the house. Hey, Russ. Hello. This, this is... This is big leaf maple out of that piano. They they use big leaf maple to make the soundboard. So I'm gonna have to. I can scrounge some of it. I don't. Those probably go three quarters of an inch deep in that inch and a half piece of wood. So I can save some of it, but some of it's not gonna be salvageable. Uh, every tool I have is plumbed with dust collection. And I even built a downdraft table recently that I connect to the hose that connects to my scroll saw and my uh, six inch orbital sander is also plumbed with dust collection. So I put stuff that I'm sanding on top of that. And I've got it open to the dust collector, and I've got the sander open to the dust collector, so I don't get any of that in my lungs. It all goes back in there into the cyclone, which is oh, back in there. Do, I was thinking about doing a downdraft table. Sanding. Yeah, it's it's easy. I did a video on it. Uh, Beth says she doesn't feel bad about her craft room now, looking at your shop. Oh, yeah, well, it's a good... Um, it's called the messy studio for a reason, folks. I'll get something cleaned off, and before you know it, horizontal surfaces collect crap. Yep. That's just the way it goes. Everything. The, everything. Uh, just the way it goes. Horizontal surfaces collect crap. Uh, I do have a few metal working tools. My metal tops off. Uh, that Hitachi. My Hobart welder. That's a MIG welder. And, and I'm not a very good welder. I wouldn't trust my welds as far as I could throw this shop. Okay. I think I have tortured y'all enough. Oh, look at that pretty burl. Or wood. <laughs> oh. Uh, that may be walnut, too. Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh, and I didn't even show you the wood back there in that back room. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, good gracious. More wood. Uh, that's teak. I'm going to be using that in that other teak I showed you a while ago. I have the legs off of that table. And I'm going to be making me a shower bench for our new walk-in shower out of this teak. Because teak and water don't mind each other. This is Arizona ash, spalted hackberry, Texas persimmon, mulberry, hackberry, 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 wild plum. Uh, quarter sun oak, all that is kiln dried quarter sun oak over there. Those are fence boards from a reclaimed fence. I use that sometime. We tore a the playground out at church, and I'm supposed to be using this wood and rebuilding that picnic table for church. There's another one up there that I got to go get after I get this one done. 
and uh, that was a year ago. But I'm busy. Ah, oh, busy, yeah. Uh, I'm always much. doing something. Always doing something. I got uh, most of that over there is hickory. I got to do something with that root ball. It's been laughing at me for the last two years. Uh, oh, root ball. Oh, yeah. Live oak. That's all live oak. This is Arizona ash. This is ash juniper. That is ash juniper. And hackberry. And every bit of this is live oak. And Texas persimmon. Live oak. Those are live oak and hackberry root yeah, ball. There's, I couldn't keep track of all the wood. And I have, I have one, two, three stacks around the perimeter of live oak like that, except they're four times bigger. So are those uh, um, uh, rotten in the middle, or are they still good? No, no, they're good. Okay. They they're they're split on the ends, but I keep them long enough that I should be able to get some good wood out of them. Those have been drying just about long enough to be ready. But uh, honestly, I, I think like root balls, I, I think any root ball basically is just like an, an accent piece for a, a side table. I, that's just my opinion. I, I would yeah, true. Sand, sandblast it, clean it, sand it off, whatever, just freaking just put a finish on it. Okay, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see it. You can't. There is what's left of. Oh, it looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, back in there where you can't see is a 40 foot or the, the lower 20 feet of a 40 foot elm tree that came down in a storm last year <clears throat> okay da -da 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 -da. Ba -da -ba -ba. I know you can't see it, but there's a fish pond right there. You might can hear it. Can you hear the waterfall? No. Uh, the weeds have gotten out of control, but look, Jess, frog. Oh, can't see it. Can't see. It. There's like six frogs out in here. It's crazy. Frogs everywhere. Oh, I got hash pollen stuff on me. I mean. Okay. Okay. Back to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> and I'll be in my chair in a second. No, oh, I thought you were going to grab your uh, off center goblet. Oh, my who? Oh, yeah. Duh, sorry. My bad. Okay, this isn't very big. It's only about oh, inch and three quarter in diameter. We'll see how it's three sided. Mm -hmm. Except this one, if you'll notice, this side doesn't have the same angle as that side, and this side doesn't have the same angle as that side, well, and so on. Because I turned it I with a twist. So if you turn it with a twist, you get different angles. It's still three-sided. Do what? But it's the same angle on every opposite direction, right? Yes. Yeah, and you can you can see, if you look down this way, you can see the twist. That's pretty cool. And what I'm going to be doing in Austin is going to be about three times that size. 
Uh, Jessica's asking what kind of fish you got in your pond. They're just goldfish. That's a personal question, Jess. <laughs> They're just goldfish. Uh, I've scrolled those. Those are my Star Trek gnomes. That's Kirk, Spock. See the ears? Uh huh. And uh, Uhura. Uhura. And I did that little layered bunny a few years ago. That scrolled. Ah, what's this? A glazed donut. I remember you making that too. Yep, the donut is hollow. It's ash juniper. And the plate is live oak, the saucer. And white resin. Did you make that donut as a Taurus or just you, you just spun it out on the lathe shaped it on the uh, lathe. i turned it on the lathe i mean i don't i mean it is a torus but because it's hollow and there's this piece is some more of that this lid is walnut this is the the finial is spalted hackberry and the the hollow form itself is mesquite. Just a little lidded box that I think is really, really pretty. Uh, I do resin work sometimes as well. This is ash juniper that I used as a filler so I wouldn't use as much resin. And the green and the green and white stripes in it are plastic or nylon cargo strapping. You know, the, the kind that boxes come yeah. wrapped in where they used to use steel around them. Now they use this stuff. And I used uh, almost a uh, Uranium glass colored green resin. That looks that turned out awesome. Jessica's asking, do you leave your fish out in the winter? Or do you get a pump moving the water? I'm like, oh, no. This is Texas. No, they survive just fine. This is my little St. Patrick's Day gunk. Gonk. Uh, turn Christmas tree. Uh, somebody said something about the tree of life last night. That scrolled. Uh, I did that one back there too, except that's not scrolled. That's freehand router carb sign. So I used a router and uh, I had the pattern drawn on the page or on the piece. And I just used a router and I freehanded all of that out. I still, uh, I still don't trust myself with a router and freehanding something because it just looks like it's going to just go and, you know, then it's screwed. Yeah. I mean, it works fine. Uh, you just got to be a little steady. This is one of the snowmen that I make. No, Feathers like in his hat. Uh, almost looks like hollies. <laughs> Almost. Uh, this one, that little bowl, that's oak, and it is a that is cotton fabric. Really? That I that I inlaid in there. Yep. Cool. And this one is spalted hackberry, and that is black cord that I inlaid. I did those on a uh, live demo for Worldwide Wood Turners last year. Here's another three-sided piece. It's a little bud vase. Uh, 
And I made that out of, I think this is alder. That's pecan. Not pecan? Oh. No, not pecan. Uh, this is a six-sided, six-sided lidded box out of ash juniper. And I textured the inside of the lid and dyed it. Little mesquite box that I left the natural sides in. I just, and I, I textured it and used gold. I, I just have fun. Another little lidded box made out of mesquite and blue resin. Oh, one more thing. Una mas. It's not getting a good light right there. This is Osage Orange. There's like five pieces. Oh yeah, and and it there they were turned they were turned off center. I, I taped them to a big platter, and and then I, I spun them and turned them off center, and then brought them all back together. And this started out as one piece, but it came apart. So I put them all together, and how I thought it looked nice, and glued them up and finished it. And what do you see right here? Upper left hand corner, what do you see? I, I see the head remember. of a I see the head of a bird and a beak. Oh yeah, okay, I see it. Oh yeah, I see it now. Anyway, that was an accident. But I so I make I turn wall hanging pieces to not just fancy bowls. Okay, now back to your regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Thanks, John. Not a problem, really. <laughs> oh, hey, Jeff, how's it going? Hey, everybody that popped in. Anyone, oh, anyone in from Billy? For everybody that popped in, <laughs> he was going to sing there. So. Uh, okay, lately we got Jeff and um, Jeff and Nancy and Will. Uh, Adele showed up. Uh, Connie here. Uh, who else? Everybody else. Well, Jeff, Nancy, Will, everybody. I'll be right back. Oh, Nancy popped in earlier, and I thought she did. Yeah, Nancy, I've been looking for it too. I, have, I cannot find when it was. I guess I should go back and just write down when uh, when people show up in my lives. Then when they ask, I can say, oh, this is when it was. <laughs> this is the How Is Robin Feeling show. Or Joe, I can give you a field trip. Here. Here's the top of my desk. Hello, Dutchman. And there's the bottom of my desk. <laughs> Ow. Uh, here about lurking granddaughter. What me today? I've never scrolled, but I want to make my own. Wait, what would Jeff say? I never scroll, but I want to make my own hooks. Oh, Greg. Hey, Greg. Oh, yeah. All right. Greg showed up, too. I forgot about that. And oh, for anybody out there that is Larkin.
Hey, Greg. And anybody I missed? And Rob shared out your page. While I was while I was while I was running my mouth. And Rob shared out your page and your store as well. Oh, thank you, Robin. Invitation of the tour, Billy. Adele said, "Damn, finally! What? Finally, the fat boy shut up." No, the the nope. look of Finally, I put her video up for. Her oh, video. oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> he said I should have charged the book fifty ahead. <laughs> I just go out there and have fun. Um, it's hard to believe that I just took the leaf blower to that shop and blew it all out it was, uh, four weeks ago. Don't take long, does it? But when when you're standing at the wood lathe and making chips, I mean, just stuff is everywhere. I need to put, I need to get some Visqueen and hang it up in between my lathe, my big lathe and my scroll saw. That'll keep the stuff off the scroll saw and keep it from going back to the laser, I think. And hang another piece behind that other yellow lathe. Then maybe I can keep some of that stuff consolidated better. Know what I mean? Yep. You're right, Beth. Beth says creating is fun. Love making nothing into beautiful something. That's one of the. You're welcome, Chris. The one of the things that that I love about woodworking and turning and that means all woodwork. Period. Especially turning is you never know what you're going to find inside a piece once you start working on it. <clears throat> you might have an idea of. What this piece is going to, if you're doing flat work, you know what a board's going to turn into. Flat work is in building furniture or cabinets or whatnot. You know what a board's going to turn into. You've already got that design in your head. If you're doing a scroll saw, you've got that design. You know what that's going to turn into. Very often, I'll put a piece on a lathe and I'll have an idea. Okay, I think I'm going to try this shape with this piece. And you start turning it and getting into it. Hello, Chris Neeland. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, and you, you start turning it and getting into it, and and the piece says, I don't want to be that. Look at this figure, or look at this grain over here, or look at that, or look at that inclusion. I don't want to be what you want me to be. I want to be what I want to be. So I try to listen to the wood and make it be what it wants to be, if that makes sense. It sounds crazy, I know. But I love what nature gives me when I'm inside a piece of wood. And when it jumps off the lathe, it's like, I don't want to be a bowl. I want to be a platter. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Really cool. Usually when it comes off the lathe, for me, <clears throat> last one I had come off the lathe, the blue block actually gave. But uh, so I haven't been throwing them off the lathe much lately. But usually when it happens, it's because I either chose the wrong mounting method. When you're mounting a piece in a, say you're mounting a piece in a chuck, you have to turn either what's called a tenon for that chuck to grab onto externally, or you have to turn a mortise, which is a hole that the chuck will expand into internally so you have to make that decision when you're going into a piece of wood <clears throat> and usually when a bolt comes off the lathe on me it's because i chose the wrong mounting method or i didn't or i didn't make sure i had uh thick enough walls for my mortise uh, typically it's with a turn a tenon because if you're turning a, a flat grain piece which is where the the lathe is spinning this way, but the wood grain runs this way. Uh, so you've got 
those straws like this and you're clamping on them, that's the weakest direction. The belly. It can break off. And sometimes I get a little aggressive and they break off. The belly. But so for grain running that way, my preferred method is a mortise where I'm spreading into a hole because I get, I find that's a, a stronger purchase than trying to use a tenon. So I haven't been throwing too many things off the lathe lately. Billy. Chris had never thought of a mortise as a hole. Well, it is. I've right, got a question for you, Billy. Yeah. How long have you been, uh, long you oh, been trying to like 50 years? Uh, Larry C. said, I know what you're saying, Billy. Uh, okay. Uh, I have been turning since 2003. Okay. So 21 years. I've been doing woodworking. Were you was a shop teacher, wasn't you? No, no, I was a biology teacher. Um, oh, okay. I, uh, I've, I've, I've been doing woodworking well, I built my first piece of furniture, and we still have it. Uh, it was the, the legs screwed together over a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. And so I took a sheet of plywood, and I cut it, and I stained it, sanded it, and stained it, and finished it, and drilled the holes in it. I had nothing but a hand drill, electric drill, a circular saw, and uh, one of those half-sheet random orbit sanders, the vibrating kind. That was the only power tools I had. Uh, but I built that first piece of furniture when I was 19, and we still have it. <laughs> I, I built the bunk beds that my, my kids grew up in, and my youngest daughter still has them. They're as rock solid as the day I built them. And I made them out of two by eight and two by 10 construction material. And they don't rack, they don't anything, but you can take them apart and stack them. And, uh, or, I over-engineer everything. I, I have, I built, I was 25 when I made that. And I was, and I'm 69 now. So I, I've been doing woodworking for 50 years. <laughs> You're only 32. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah, 32 twice and then some. Um, I built a, a drafting desk. My youngest daughter still has that. I built that when I was in college in 86. I was a late bloomer. Uh, wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. What was the next thing I made? I don't know. we moved in here, my wife said, I want an island for this kitchen, a rolling one, so that we can move it out into the middle and roll out dough and stuff. And so three years later, <laughs> she saw these plans in one of my woodworking magazines. She said, I want you to build this. But I'm, And I knew I was going to have to change the adjustments in it. I couldn't build it to the plans because it's not the same size as our kitchen. It needed to be wider and it needed to be taller and it needed to be longer. And because she wanted it at the same level as the counters. And so I had to adjust all the dimensions in it. But finally one year, a couple of years ago, uh, two, maybe three Thanksgivings ago, she said, she came to me the 1st of September and she said, I want that island done by Thanksgiving. Actually, the end of August, but yeah, first part of September. It took me three months, but I got it done. <coughs> Have I... <coughs> Chris Neal says, if you've grown up, Bill, I've grown out. <laughs> I, I don't know about growing up, but I've grown out. I, I've built houses too, Larry. I was, 
<laughs> well, I was a production foreman for a trust company before I went to college. Built trusses for houses. I've built, I can build a house from the ground up. Done it. Uh, helped build our church from the ground up, foundation and all. No, me either. Go ahead, Art. Beth said she never grew up. Yeah, she said she never will. Hmm. Must be a Toys R Us kid. <clears throat> I used to I used to want to make frames for some of our pictures like that when my mom did and whatnot. And I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I sucked at it. I couldn't get a, but my equipment wasn't good enough. If you, you, you've got to have equipment that's good enough to be able to cut consistent 45 degree angles if you want to build frames. And my, my stuff just wasn't, wasn't good enough. My cheap table saws wouldn't do it. Nothing. But I can build a frame in a heartbeat now. <clears throat> Chris K said, John, are you ready for yarn to speak to as Billy's Wood talks to him? <laughs> speak to you. It's going to make what I make it. It's going to go the way I want it to. If it doesn't, <laughs> I'm going to throw it out start over. I'm not going to frog nothing. I'm just going to tie it off and put it aside. <clears throat> Larry C said, I'm a Toys R Us kid in my mind, but not in my body. Yeah, my mind hey, still tells me I'm 30, 30 years old. And my body says, try it and die, fat boy. You know what's going to happen, Billy? John's going to have what's to that? build another rack to put the unfinished yarn projects on. You, you know that's right. <laughs> or, or another tub. He'll have to put them in a tub to keep them yeah, from getting all those smoky. Guys are a riot. <laughs> Connie said, LOL, I was frogging today. <laughs> Will said, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <clears throat> <clears throat> no, I didn't either. I had a four year scholarship at Texas Tech when I graduated high school at age 17. Uh, I just knew that uh, my. Dad, I graduated from Muleshoe High School, which is 80 miles west of Lubbock, or 65, 70 miles. And uh, that wasn't far enough. So I, I, I walked away. All I had to do was show up. I was too smart to go to college. So I walked away and enlisted in the Air Force and volunteered for Vietnam. And then 10 years later, I decided, well, I had an oil field business and the bottom fell out in 83. We lost everything but our house. And this was after I got out of the Air Force. And uh, I decided, well, you got a GI Bill. If you don't start using it, you're going to lose it. So I used my GI Bill and Went to college and got my bachelor's, double majored biology and education. Got my degree in two and a half years, graduated cum laude. And the rest is history. Hmm. Did go to graduate school at the University of Alabama, I almost forgot about that. Beth said, frogging means a whole different thing to me. Chris said, my cousin just gave me his pneumatic underpinned picture frames in my future. His pneumatic underpinned. I don't know what that is, Chris. Hello, PQ. <clears throat> See, you just thought I was going to 
Hey, Kimmy. Say it since I just type it out. Kimberly. <laughs> Hello, Kimberly. <clears throat> uh, Chris K., thank you. I did not go to Nam. I got orders to Vietnam when I was in tech school. And two weeks after I got my orders, President Nixon said, no mas, we're coming home. And the wing that I was going to be attached to uh, was over there. And they came back and went back to Seymour Johnson, which is where they deployed from, Goldsboro, North Carolina. And so I followed the wing when I got out of tech school. I followed the wing to Sadie Jane Airplane Patch in Goldsboro and spent 15 months there. I got married while I was there, married a girl from my hometown, came back and to Texas and married her and drug her back to North Carolina. She'd never been out of away from home. And we got to got to my I had rented a mobile home before I left. I got to my mobile home <coughs> and I had orders taped to my door and my or a, or a note taped to my trailer house door. My the guy across the street from me was my supervisor and he said, Billy, uh, when you get back come see me, I've got your orders. And I had orders for Elmendorf Air Force Base in Anchorage, Alaska. But when I got my orders, I wasn't married. When they cut my orders, I wasn't married. So my orders were unaccompanied long tour. So I had to go see if I could get my orders amended so my wife could go with me. And uh, they did. And our oldest two girls were born up there. My wife was all freaking out about it. That nearly cost us a divorce. It was one thing to move her halfway across the country to North Carolina, but up to Alaska for her crying out loud. Um, so the marriage was almost over before it started, but it wasn't. Her mother said, don't worry about it. She said, my aunt is up there, my aunt and uncle, Norma's great aunt and uncle. She said, and your daddy's, two of your daddy's brothers are up there, so you'll be fine. And we were. We loved it. Absolutely loved it. What are you, what are you wiping on there, John? Uh, paint thinner, because I put my pattern right on the wood. Oh, you oh. didn't use your... Uh, Rust and seal? No. no. Okay. <clears throat> I, I thought he might have turned into Robin and was using antique wax. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm antique waxing, because that's what I do with all my wood. <laughs> Well, everybody's, you know, we're all used to you using your present seal. <clears throat> no, I saw him spray that. I knew he didn't. It was a rush job. Oh, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize what he was putting on there to help get the glue off. <coughs> Connie said, Dart, I'm going to. Oh yeah, I was, have I, you I, send it to Utah so it gets there when I'm here, when I'm there? Yeah, uh, Connie, just let me know, and I'll need an address to send it there. So whenever you're I visited, uh, ready. Beth, are you in North Carolina? Is that what you're saying? She said, "I love North Carolina much better than Maine, almost into Canada." <clears throat> I visited Maine for two weeks when I was teaching for the Air National Guard Bureau or the National Guard Bureau. I was teaching Air National Guard base up in Bangor. Got to say it right. Yeah, I like it too, Billy. Better than Illinois. Yeah. I, I didn't mind North Carolina at all. I really didn't. Um, of course, I live in a deep it was not, but But I don't I, I like the South, you know. Yeah, I didn't mind North Carolina at all. Connie said she needs to know how much it is. Twenty-five. She'll pay Connie. you when she gets you the address. Twenty-five, Connie. <clears throat> yep, I was in Bangor for Bangor for two weeks. So Annie. Annie, yeah, one of my the sponsors. Only, the only reason I make it look easy is because, you know, it's not that hard to do. <clears throat> cool. 
anybody can scroll. Well, anybody can scroll saw. Even no, Robin can scroll saw. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it scroll saw is not that hard. It really is. You just gotta be you just gotta be steady. She's got a Pegas as well. Oh Lord, God, Will. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, we had three squadrons. This was back in the days of the F four. Uh, Phantom. I worked on E models, and um, I've I've long since forgotten. I do remember I was twenty second AMS up at Elmendorf, but I don't remember. What I was at Seymour. <clears throat> it's been too long ago, my friend. Yeah, that was a while back. <laughs> yeah. 1974, yeah, 50 years ago, that's all. <laughs> yeah, it was just 50 years ago. Chris said wedding night was in Bangor. Bangor? Shut up, Chris. <laughs> See, I, was, I was 14 then, Bang. man. Bang bang and, and banger. <clears throat> um, and anyway, one of the she had been my student uh, at the base that I taught at out of Tennessee, McGee Tyson Air National Guard Base. And when I came up there to teach the rest of her compatriots, um, she was basically my my welcoming sponsor up there and. <clears throat> <laughs> I was going to be there over the weekend. She said, she said, you ought to go to buy a Haba. I said, what? She said, That's you should go see Bar Haba. Bar Harbor. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Maine speak, or yeah. should I say New England speak, um, Bar Harbor. Uh -huh. But it's by Haba. I mean, it was cool, though, because the there was not really a beach, but the waves come crashing into the rocks and they make these holes. And and it was it was really cool. Ben said, ah, bah, bah. yeah, bah, bah. but I'll tell you what I've had. I got the best chowder I've ever had in my life up there. Have an hour. And you you, you go into any. It, I mean, McDonald's, any fast food restaurant, even it, they have lobster poor boys, you know, lobster sandwiches, There's lobster everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mike said he worked on F4s in Duluth, Minnesota for a little bit. C 130s was his main aircraft. <clears throat> Were you a crew chief, Mike? I was avionics, so I was aircraft, I was airframe specific. Um, Duluth, Minnesota, that would have had to have been an air guard base, wouldn't it, buddy? Billy, don't lump us Connecticut folks with being speak. <laughs> well, I have to admit, <clears throat> Chris, y'all don't talk. You and Mary don't sound like you're from Maine or Massachusetts. <sighs> oh, Beth said Boston or Massachusetts and or Boston and Maine are the only ones that do that. <clears throat> oh, he was air cargo loaded the one thirties. Well, if you worked on F fours or worked with F fours, there's no cargo. Uh, Hill Air Force Base. I know Hill Air Force Base. Been there a number of times. Hill Air Force Base in Utah. I did some teaching out there too. Ah, oh, he was instruments. Okay. Oh, it was Will that loaded. He was air cargo. So, yeah. All right. I know <clears throat> our the 27, 22nd Avionics Maintenance Squadron. Uh, the, all the instruments guys, they, they worked on that. We had one thirties up at Elmendorf and we also had the F fours and they worked on both fair frames, but this was the instruments or the instruments. You can do that. Hey, 
<laughs> that said, I'm a mass hole. I'm a mass hole from Taxachusetts, so I, do, I should know. <laughs> Mary was born and raised in the Boston area. I have forgiven her. She gives Chris as Chris. Did she? I didn't pick up too much of the Bostonian type accent from her, though, Chris. Connie said she's from Utah and lived in the Salt Lake Valley and Tool Valley. <clears throat> yeah, I just heard thunder. I better get Pepper outside real quick. We just we we just had some monster storms roll through yeah, north of so Austin. Softball size hail and baseball well, size hail in a softball size hail in one of them. Baseball size uh, hail in another. Yeah, that's so that that's Come serious on. damage and kill people size stuff. Come on, let's go potty. Hurry. Oh, Come Billy. <clears throat> Come on, if you want to see. Billy, you remember that line? Wait, I put your Connie tool. Billy, you remember that line work? Two L. Is it two L Valley? <clears throat> What's that art? What is that uh, line work truck I did? Oh yeah. Um, you gonna do another one? I have to. It was the first thing that sold Saturday. Oh cool. So, yeah. So I got one. She's yeah. That's I got, one, I got another one ready in this pile of fourteen. Most of I just saw lightning. Most of my time was in the Salt Lake area. Was actually spent near Hill, Hill Air Force Base in the Ogden area. So I didn't get to Salt Lake too much. Mike said, I had the pleasure of being at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines and TDY twice to Vietnam. Well, I'm glad you made it back, buddy. My only overseas TDY was to Norway. Oh, it was terrible. Absolutely horrible. God, what a week. Go. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised I can remember much of it. And I'm not dealing with it. She can't just be in her bed. <sighs> <laughs> go to bed myself. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> it's going to be five real quick. Oh, what did Chris ask Give me enough time to finish watching this and then go to bed. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Mike, I had the oh. pleasure of being the youngest NCO ever selected to join the Thunderbirds. Chris, that's a, just a little keyboard cut out. Oh, here it is. Chris said he was on vacation in 62, walked into Salt Lake with Poison Ivy, came out with Poison Ivy. I was four. <laughs> Uh, uh, that would have been in the early 90s, Will. I bet. I've heard the Philippines was nice, especially Clark. Anyway, I didn't get to join the Thunderbirds, by the way. But the rest of the story. Uh -huh. uh. Because the gas, the fake gas crisis was going on at that time. Still and is. right right after I got selected to join the Thunderbirds, remember my air my my career field was airframe specific, so I had to stay with one aircraft. My aircraft was the F four E model, and that's what the Thunderbirds were flying when I got selected. Well, oh. the fake air crisis, I mean Chris, gas crisis. Chris, this is <coughs> somebody ordered, oh and what I'm going to do after I paint it. I'm going to cut out a name to put across here. So it, it'll look like what John just cut out, but it won't be curved oh, cool. straight across. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, Chris K was asking 
So yeah, it's just a little keyboard and it's gonna go on the back of the board. I've, I've got a, I got a paint it black and then I got uh, scroll saw lines where the keys would be. So I'll paint them white and black. So that, that's what that is, Chris. That's cool art. So anyway, they changed their frames to the T38 and I didn't get to join the Thunderbirds. So that's long story short. Yeah, uh, Chris K, it's, uh, it's for Adele, her son-in-law. He plays in a band, plays keyboards. So we're going to put his name on it, and uh, he's going to get it for his birthday. Stop. Ah, what's going on out there? Yeah, a lot of them are chit-chatting among themselves. And... Yeah. <laughs> Tuila? That's how it's pronounced? Tuila? I'd have never guessed that. I would have thought it was Tuili. Joe said, oh, my God, I think I went totally deaf. I, deaf, I, I, deaf, I didn't. <clears throat> I don't hear anything now. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just going on and on and got diarrhea of the mouth. Angel still here? Angel still in the background? Uh, yes, Angela is still here. No, it's Angel. So I have a, I have a question for you, Angel. So, you, you you know it's gonna be crayon filled, right? So my, question, so my question now is, do you think so? Crime, crime shows needs a backer on it, uh, because it's all individual letters. So I I, I, I gotta make a backer for crime shows, but do you want a backer on the word crochet, or do you want it just on top of the ball like that? So if I put a backer on it, it's gonna look like that. I, I personally I like it with the backer. I think it looks better without the backer, though. Honestly. Well, if they're gonna, if the um, or, uh, okay, the ball of yarn is gonna be filled with crayon, right? Yeah, teal, teal crayon. So, so, so and the, the, and the, there's the, the the ball itself will be black with with teal colored in, interior, <clears> right? <throat> white backer the way it is here and i'm thinking i'm actually going to cut the backer on the out the for a bigger line and then sand it down to a level or two levels to, to that second line there to make it stepped up step it up wouldn't it be easier just to cut two pieces 
for your no. step than no. to try to sand the layer down? No. I, I, I could probably just run through the router. Uh, I'll run through the router too. I could do that. Oh yeah, you could do it with a router. But I think the the crochet looks better without a backer on it though. Yeah, it might. With uh, since it's going to be colored behind it. Oh, you like the backer behind the word crochet? Is that what you're saying, Angel? <clears throat> But Cam, what would you like? Yeah, see, see, because I think with the backer on it, it it, it draws away, it takes away from it. I, I think it does too a little. If the, maybe if the backer was a little smaller, but it depends on what size washer you run around it with. Yeah, I think it looks but that's just my two cents. You didn't ask me. <laughs> Without it, okay. But no backer. Garbage. Nope, not garbage. Not scrap. I can turn it into something else. <clears throat> yeah, and then and then crime shells will have a backer on, but it's only gonna be like a one eighth line. Crime shells, like ampersand crime shells will have like a one eighth line around it rather than a a half inch, quarter inch line like that one. <clears throat> so now I gotta go get some, I gotta find teal crayons. Because apparently Staples has stopped selling their individual crayons now. So you're gonna luck out. You're like one of the last people to get one of these, you know that, right? All the next is gonna be like yellow, black. That's it, done. Billy. You so, anybody got any questions, comments? You can <coughs> I don't know if I have a question. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> anybody got any questions, comments, inquiries they want to throw out there to ask me before we end the show? Has it been that long already? Two hours My, and three minutes. Ran, huh. And an hour and a half of it was me. Mm -hmm. Yep. God gracious. Hey, Kiwi. Sorry. Yeah, but we planned it. John planned it, remember? This is will upload tomorrow's Whip yeah, Wednesday true. video. I hope everyone's doing well. Whip. Uh, it's sort of set up right now, so I'm still working on my logo for it, but, uh, I think I'll still do a video tomorrow. So I got a thumbnail ready, almost ready to go up. So I'll still work on that. So, uh, yeah. Um, show me tomorrow for, uh, books, whips and chains. <laughs> John's enticing crochet journey. Let's go. That goes out the window. So if you're not already subscribed to it, I got I got 20 subs already. Look at that, I got 20 subs already. I don't and I don't know why it comes up with my name on there, but uh, uh, if you're not already subbed to it, here you go. It's right there. Uh, Seven Mountain, eight Central, nine Eastern. Six Pacific, ten Maritime, ten thirty Newfoundland, five Alaska. Um, two o'clock in the morning for uh, Amanda over in Sweden. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting journey. See, yeah, I don't I don't even know what my format's gonna be yet. Hey, Michael, uh, with cutting angles, how do you work out the angle to push the cut out to make it raised without it falling out? Uh, Art, it's twelve degrees, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a twelve degree angle. 
Um, I guess it, it depends on how how high you want it to stick out. Yeah, the, 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 depending on how. Uh, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> I actually don't do I, I actually don't do a lot of them. Um, I'm pretty sure that this one. So this is half, half inch. This half inch. Pretty sure this is half inch material. Like if you're gonna do push up stuff from like make it look like yeah yeah, that. yeah like that or, or or you can do them to, for, to make them look like buildings and mountains and all kinds of stuff. I think twelve yeah, degrees is so, correct. Michael, this this is uh, this is twelve millimeter stock, right? And I pr I'm pretty sure there was a, a there was a twelve degree twelve degree angle on it, and it brings it brings it through about about halfway, pushes it through about halfway, to give you freaking light, to give you a nice step down, right? <clears throat> And then, de depending on the 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 angle you go with, it's going to actually go further. Do a test cut first, and then poke it through. See how far it goes. Just adjust your angle a bit. Poke it through again. That's a that's the easy way to do it. I find. What is the lowest on twelve mil material? Like it's uh, like I said. So so that's that's a twelve degree angle, and it goes it goes about halfway through. Yeah. So if you go. 10 it'll go a little less if you go 20 degree oh, yeah. it'll go further my 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 puzzles john you know i use it so much sometimes it does vibrate it crooked so yeah. out of the one inch they'll come out about that far before they'll stop and then i'll have to readjust to get it 90 degree again but i don't i don't i don't use a level i just turn it until they come out yeah so so with, with with that being 12 degrees like it, it it's tight it, like it, it uh, i can't i can't push it through anymore it stopped it's def, it's dead stop right there but the thing is you can still push it back through still pop it out yeah you can still pop it out but it it will it will go tight right there it will go tight night lego um okay i should be back by then dropping off huge donation to a fam facility hour away tomorrow late afternoon uh, boo, boo, boo. I was late, so waiting for intro jam. Like to go. I did play it. Ah, Dal. Jeez. Yeah, you were late anyway. Good night, Greg. Good night, Crafty Annie. All right. Uh, what else got? Good night. Good night. Good night, Jeff. Good night, everyone. Good night, Harrison. Well, I got to finish working on my logo, though. All right, anybody. So I got. I got. I'm gonna cut the live. But if anybody wants to hang out, you guys know. Just message me. You guys know where to find me. Um, just message me, and I'll set something up because I just gotta work on my logo. So I'll be in the background, not doing anything at all. Oh, Billy says you lost power. Yeah, they got that storm moving in. Oh. <clears throat> well, at least the storm right. waited to really give us the tour of his shop for everybody. I'm moving off the Facebook page going to stick with YouTube. Okay, Jeff. Good night, Liz. So everybody take care, have fun, and we'll see you on Thursday for more Daddy Scrolls. But we'll see you tomorrow for the Hulk Whips and Chains. All right. Have fun. Take care. See you all later.